What does being a Creole woman mean to you? Being a Creole woman means that you are strong, you are supportive, you know, just a woman of morals, values, family is, is very important to you. Manners, you know, being polite to everyone, you know, learning how to listen rather, you know, you know, than to talk. And these are not just ideals that are taught to girls, but to boys in general. Me, for me, it's all about culture. The Creoles are very proud of upbringing to be prim and proper, particularly that the, it was an English colony, so we were brought up more or less in the British way. What does that mean, like as a woman? Like what, what does that entail? Um, womanhood. Uh, you don't give yourself away. You make friends, you make boyfriends, but you don't give yourself away easily. Being a Creole woman like our mothers and grandmothers, they're, they're, um, they were unique in the sense that the way they lived, so Creole, the Creole culture is more of a lifestyle. First, we're Christians, so um, you would not find Creoles who are not Christians. So um, there are things we don't do on Sunday because we consider Sunday to be the holy day. So our grandmothers and our mothers would do all of their cooking on Saturday, and and you know, and then we just go to church on Sunday, come home, eat, and then just rest, and and then also. Um, the way we were raised, we were not raised to be outside in the street. I mean, which probably might, you might consider tribalistic, but as Creoles, we were raised to be with ourselves. Um, and we were not allowed to play with the other kids, the other you know tribes. We were allowed to, we were not allowed to go and mix with them. We were kind of like um, a group of people within Sierra Leone who were separate. Um, the Creoles were uh, the first. Um, to be educated in Sierra Leone, so you had all your lawyers and your doctors to be Creole, so um, which make us think that we were the elite. And because of that, you know, um, most of us were, um, co were considered ourselves a little better than others. Um, that's where you get the pride stuff that comes in. Now when you look back on it, you realize that that was not the right thing to do. What does it mean to be a Creole woman? I don't I, I'm not, I'm still figuring that out. I'm, I don't know if I feel that I'm a Creole woman myself because I think that c culture or being able to say that you're a Creole person, you have to, I think, do certain things and have certain cultural trappings. And like, I would think that you, you know, maybe you need to, you know, be a mother, be married and passing on the culture in some sort of way. Obviously, you're going to talk Creole. And you said you were raised by a Creole woman, so you would try to give me that perspective. What do you think makes a Creole woman unique? Their upbringing. If you were born and raised in Sierra Leone, you would notice that the way Creoles bring up their children is different from the ways any other culture in Sierra Leone brings up their children. One of the main differences that I notice is that Creole women are more... Um, they, they're more westernized than the other groups or the other women in different groups. The difference is it's our food. We eat a lot of, uh, what we would call it, plazas, the bitter leaves, the cream cream. It was when people start coming from the provinces, we started eating cassava leaves and potato leaves and stew, you know, the cool woman would tell you about stew boil. This is the English way of having a broth, just, you know, cooking the proper way. My old grandmother would tell me not to overboil the stew. But, mm -hmm. I didn't even know that. Uh -huh. Just give it one lazy tick. <laughs> <laughs> so I've known all my life that I was Creole and Sierra Leonean, but what that meant <clears throat> in an entire lived Sierra Leonean context in the sense of the ways in which your culture is re reinforced from within as well as reinforced from without, what you know people say and people perceive. So much of what I could gather from what people from without thought was Creole was not, a, was not things that I considered to be cultural such as the way that I dress, because I wasn't dressing any way that was distinctly different from anyone else around me, or the way necessarily that I talked, we all mainly talk Creole, or 
the way that I did a marriage ceremony or burial, but there were more superficial things like what was perceived as a Creole a attitude, like we're considered stuck up or maybe we keep to ourselves or elitist in that sense. And those are not necessarily culture. And maybe some non-Creoles or Creoles themselves think that that's culture, but that's not what makes Creole culture. Those are, those are additional things. That might be class when compared, maybe higher class, and I and I don't know if I don't think that was ever economic, or I don't think it was or even political. But there's this maybe intellectual elitism that we have, very much grounded in education, mm -hmm. and um, but but that again, nobody really that that can't be the sum total of your culture because anybody and everybody can get an education now. It's going to be a lot more difficult to define Creole womanhood as you know we marry people who are not Creole as we have children who, you know, who's linked to Sierra Leone is even less than the ones that we have having not grown up there, being born there for the most part. So, you know, I, I think that the effort should be more so to preserve what it is that, you know, our mothers and our grandmothers have taught us. But in essence, I don't think that it'll necessarily change. It's just the challenge is just keeping it together.